In this video, we'll discuss different devices that can be used to measure blood pressure in the clinic. There are several options available on the market to measure blood pressure. The two most common you'll encounter in the clinic are manual aneroid devices, which we have here, and then automatic oscillometric devices. Both measure blood pressure using different but similar methods. Mercury sigmometers have been the gold standard for blood pressure measurement, but have been phased out due to safety concerns regarding mercury toxicity. Therefore, aneroid or clock face devices have replaced most mercury sigmometers as a device for choice for manual blood pressure measurement. And they have also been shown to be reasonably accurate or sufficiently accurate compared to mercury sigmometers. As mentioned in the video on seated blood pressure measurement, Oscillatory blood pressure measurement is based on the identifications of sounds resulting from the return of arterial blood flow following a period of temporary occlusion. As the cuff deflates below peak pressure, the blood returns into the artery in a turbulent fashion since it has to push open the collapsed distal arterial wall. This causes vibration along the wall causing a tapping sound which is identified as a systolic pressure. Once a cuff falls below the diastolic pressure, the sound disappears because laminar blood flow has returned into the arterial wall and it no longer vibrates or collapses. It's now held open by the diastolic pressure and now only gently ebbs and flows with each heartbeat. The emergence of sound is used as a systolic pressure and the subsequent disappearance of sounds is used as a diastolic pressure. In this section, we'll discuss oscillatory devices. Now, oscillatory devices produce a digital readout of blood pressure and work on the principle that blood flowing through the artery between systolic and diastolic pressures causes vibrations in the arterial wall, which we described earlier, which can be detected and transduced into electrical signals. With an oscillatory device, a cuff is inflated over the arm or wrist. These devices generally inflate the cuff to a pressure above 20 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure. As the cuff is deflating below the systolic blood pressure, it allows blood to flow back into the artery, which again causes vibrations in the arterial wall. When the cuff falls below the patient's diastolic blood pressure, blood flows smoothly through the artery without any vibration in the wall, which again is due to the laminar flow and the return of the normal diastolic blood pressure. Now these vibrations during deflation are transferred from the arterial wall through the air inside the cuff and into a transducer in the device which converts those measurements into electrical signals. The point of maximal oscillation is identified by the device which corresponds to the mean pressure. Systolic and diastolic blood pressure are then estimated based on this maximum point of oscillation by the device according to an algorithm. Both devices possess unique advantages and disadvantages for blood pressure measurement. However, studies have shown that oscillatory devices are as accurate as manual measurement for resting blood pressure. Now, it's if they are both calibrated and used correctly. Previous studies have also demonstrated that oscillatory devices may reduce the white coat response to blood pressure measurement. This is because the measurements used during an oscillatory device can be taken without the clinician in the room. Oscillatory devices are also less susceptible to oscillatory gap than manual measurement. However, it's always important to know how to take a manual blood pressure in the case of the device failing. Additionally, since all symmetric devices measure blood pressure by detecting vibrations, they cannot be used during exercise, while manual blood pressure measurement is the standard of practice for exercising blood pressures. Both devices require routine calibration and inspection to make sure the devices are functioning properly. Now, for, for more information on inspection and calibration, refer to our video on inspection and calibration. There are two other devices on the market, automatic oscillatory cuffs and wrist cuffs. Now your automatic oscillatory cuffs combine the best of both automated oscillometric cuffs and manual blood pressure cuffs. These devices allow for an accurate measurement at rest, but most notably they're allowed to measure blood pressure automatically during exercise. Now these are most often used in stress testing labs and they typically come at a bit of a higher cost, therefore they may be a little bit impractical to use in most clinics. 
Now, wrist devices have the advantages of being smaller than the arm devices, which may make them very useful for individuals who are obese who may not have a fitting cuff size. However, it's been demonstrated that these wrist cuffs have issues with accuracy and have a tendency to over estimate systolic blood pressure. Therefore, wrist monitors have potential and may be useful in certain clinical situations, but they need to be further evaluated and examined and validated for clinical usage. There's a multitude of different devices that you can use. Some have unique advantages and some have other unique disadvantages. The key thing is standardized protocol and measuring consistently.